So quickly looking at the table create, um, it has partitioning and clustering support. Um, it does accept a table schema in a Google defined JSON format. Now create expiring tables. Um, so you can set the number of days for expiry. So if you want a table to expire in five days, um, you can set that while creating the table. It's really good when you're um, having data that's temporary. Um, maybe you process it and then you don't need the table anymore. You don't have to remember to go and delete it. You can partition based on both time and range. Um, I mean, it's an either or, but uh, both are supported. And that covers all the cases that uh, BigQuery has in terms of partitioning. Uh, you can also cluster on multiple fields. Um, so just to quickly to tell what partitioning and clustering is, partitioning is basically dividing your table into physical blocks, um, but clustering is dividing it into logical blocks. So it's still in the same physical space uh, on disk in, in Google's data center, but it's just logically kind of uh, segmented. So, so you can cluster on multiple fields and you can also combine clustering and partitioning. And the way that works is it's first partitioned into physical blocks and then clustered into logical blocks. Um, the next nap is the table data list nap. Uh, it's similar to a select star. Um, the difference is it's not actually executing SQL. It's uh, using gRPC to pull data out of the table um, and it lists all columns and rows. Some of the two new snaps. Um, and so this is a pipeline that kind of showcases both those snaps. Um, and the, the use case here is basically, there's this org that has uh, Twitter data in um, a bunch of tables across data sets in the US uh, location. And they want to move to uh, the data to Zurich. Uh, so maybe it's something related to data re residency, uh, but that's, that's what they'd like to do. And um, uh, this pipeline basically achieves that. So if you look at um, the way we've used the other snaps, we first are listing the data sets in the, in the project, and then we're listing all the tables in the data set. So that gives you like all the tables across all your data sets. And then we create a table out of it using the first document. Um, and then we also insert all that data into the new table. So just to give you a quick look of what we're doing, if I search for the Twitter data table, you'll see that there's actually three tables called Twitter data in three different data sets. Um, what this pipeline is going to do is it's going to pull data out of all these uh, tables and it's going to put them in a new table in Zurich. So you can see the data location is US. This table has 50 rows. Um, the next one has 7,900 rows. And um, the last one has 12,000 rows. So we're gonna get all this data. And um, going back here, so basically what this is doing is it's filtering on that table because you're getting all the tables from all data sets. Um, and in this uh, path, what we're doing is we're just taking the first document and we're using that to create the table. That's gonna be uh, where the schema comes from. As you can see, the table list map does output uh, schema in that format. So you can just pipe that over, um, pass that over and uh, create it. Uh, we're setting the table expiration to three days. Um, we're enabling partitioning and we're doing it by um, field, which is time. And so there's a field in the, um, table called created at, which is a timestamp field. So we're going to use that and partition by month. So all the data for a month is going to be in one physical block. The next thing we're also doing is clustering and we're clustering based on uh, tweets from a particular user. So that's what we're doing here. And so to put, quickly uh, talk about why this is important, I guess if you look at the right snap, there's a create table with not present option. Um, but that's very imprecise because we're inferring schemas, we're making assumptions, and we're not clustering, partitioning, or creating expir expiring tables. So none of that support exists there. Um, but now you can basically replace that checkbox with a snap, which gives you a lot more options. Um, moving on to the upper line, I'll actually start validating since this takes a little bit of time to run, uh, five or six minutes. Uh, but basically, we have the table data list snap. This is a new snap, which uses um, gRPC. Um, we're passing in all those project IDs, data set IDs, and table IDs that are 
uh, output by the upstream snaps. And so that's going to list all the rows and all the tables um, which match our selection. And then finally, we use the existing BigQuery write snap. Uh, we're not using the create table with not present since the table create snap does that for us. And we're putting all that data in the Twitter data table in Zurich. So we've seen the table create snap um, created a table. So let's go back here. Um, and we search for Twitter data. Now you'll see that a new table popped up. Um, so let's quickly look at the table. So you'll see that the schema is exactly what it was um, in the in the tables that uh, we kind of read from. You can see that it's a partition table, and there's a little icon here which shows uh, the table cut up into pieces. So that shows you that it's partitioned. Um, you can see that the table expiration is three days from now, just like we said it. And the data location is Europe West 6, which is Europe. 